All right. Well, welcome everyone to SakaiCon um, for our, I guess, third annual SakaiCon now. Um, so we're really happy that you could be here today. And um, I'm going to take you through just a really quick um, welcome to the event, and then we'll go into a few highlights of the latest release. So um, first, I want to thank our sponsors, Learning Experiences, Longsight, and EDF. Without them, this event would not happen. So thank you guys very much, especially Learning Experiences. I know you guys coordinated a lot of um, in-person uh, get-together stuff at the location in Ann Arbor. So thank you guys for, for doing that for our in-person attendees. And, um, and again, thank you to Longsight and EDF for helping make this possible. I also want to thank all of our community. Um, Sakai wouldn't exist without its dedicated community members. So I wanted to take just a moment to kind of spotlight some of the teaching group or some of the working groups that um, that help make it happen. We have teaching and learning group, the accessibility group, documentation, internationalization. There's a JIRA triage group, um, the PMC, which is a project management committee. Uh, Spanish users, hearing from those folks in uh, just a little bit. Um, the QA team, which is essential to, you know, checking for bugs and, and proposing fixes. And the user experience group, which um, helps to inform some of the UI. So um, these groups and more, this isn't a complete list, but these are, are some of the, the more active ones. Um, we are always looking for new participants. So if you have an interest in any of these, um, our meetings are posted on the Sakai project calendar, and you can also go to Confluence. You'll see the um, the wiki uh, link there on Confluence, <clears throat> where you can learn more about all of those groups and um, find out details about when they meet and how to join. And again, um, we'd love to have new members, so feel free to drop in and just lurk if you want to just listen a little bit, see what happens at one of these meetings. That's totally fine. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, we, we welcome folks to kind of roll up their sleeves and, and dive in. So um, please join us. All right, so we do have a great program lined up for you today and tomorrow. Um, I know the text here is a little bit small, but this should sort of be just kind of recap from what you've already um, seen as far as the program. So um, we'll be kicking things off today with the 23 um, highlights, Sakai okay, 23 highlights. And then we'll move into the plan unit digital from um, the folks in Spain who've been adding all sorts of great enhancements to Sakai. And then we have our teaching showcase. So that's gonna be a kind of a fast paced um, uh, session with lots of Q and A. And then we'll have a short lunch break. We'll move into lessons um, with Julianne and then our keynote, which is Dr. Chuck's Big Adventure. So that's going to happen in the afternoon. And then we'll wrap up the online portion. The face-to-face -face folks um, will have a break there in Ann Arbor. And then there's a, a Sakai Future Strategy discussion that's going to happen um, later in the afternoon. And then I believe there's some evening activities planned. So, um, so for the face-to-face -face folks, your day is going to be a little bit longer today. Um, but uh, we'll be back again tomorrow um, at 9 a.m. Again, there's another face-to-face -face session in Ann Arbor um, about accessibility and reimagining um, lessons reorder in, in light of that. Um, at 10, we'll be talking about found in translation. Um, and uh, it's a very cool translation project that the students um, at New Dayton were involved with. Um, then I'll be doing a session on grading outside the box, showing you a few different ways you can set up um, for different types of grading and scoring. Um, and then there's a session on group collaboration. So Groupies Unite um, with Christina happens tomorrow, just before our trivia. Um, we'll have a trivia session that will span um, both days. So the questions are actually pulled from the presentation. So if you pay attention, you should do well in trivia. And then um, we have a short wrap up and the folks in Ann Arbor will have lunch and depart. So that's kind of our agenda over the next couple of days. Again, we're really excited that you can join us. And for the online folks, if you guys need to drop in and out, feel free. Um, but we welcome you to attend as much as you can um, over the next couple of days. Um, just a quick note, these times are all in Eastern. So um, if you're in a different time zone, 
Um, these are Eastern Daylight Hours. And also all of the online sessions will be recorded and um, will be available um, approximately two weeks after the conference. We'll put them up on the Sakai YouTube channel. But, um, but right now, uh, only the online ones are being recorded. The face-to-face -face sessions are not planned to be recorded. So just a heads up about that. Um, and uh, let's see. Oh, since we are recording, we do ask that um, if you're just a, you know attendee in a session, please keep your microphone muted um, so that you're not making any background noise during the presentation unless you're actually asking a question. So, um, all right. So I think that's all the housekeeping. Um, so let me go ahead and dive into Sakai 23 highlights. So these are just highlights. It's not every single feature. It's kind of the more um, more noteworthy ones that I tried to pick out, um, but there are quite a few, and I think you'll be happy to see um, Sakai 23 actually is hot off the presses. We just released on Friday, so or is it? Yeah, I think it was Friday. <laughs> it was just recently. Um, so uh, so you are actually in Tri Sakai, which has been upgraded to Sakai 23, so you can experience it over the next couple of days. Um, and hopefully you like what you see. So let's um, let's look at some of the new and improved features in Sakai 23. Um, so there is a new portal. Again, you probably experienced this as you logged in. It may have looked a little bit different. Um, our sites have moved over here to the left toolbar and you'll see there's some pinned sites. You can pin and unpin directly from here if you hover over these. Um, there's also uh, the ability to do that in your list of full sites, and you have recent sites, things that aren't pinned, um, but maybe you've been to recently, those will show up down here at the bottom. Um, you can also expand and collapse any of these using the little chevrons next to the site name. Um, and so the site name and the tool that you're on has moved up to the top to kind of orient you as, as to where you are. You can also turn the sidebar on and off completely by clicking on the little hamburger icon. So if you prefer a very clean interface and you want all the real estate, um, you can turn that off. This version was also developed um, with mobile in mind. So we tried to make it as mobile friendly as possible and you'll see that in a few other places. Um, so this is just a view of the all sites. If you click on the little waffle icon in the top right, this is where you see your full list of sites. And again, you can still pin and unpin from here. You can also organize the order of which your, your pinned sites show up. Um, you can, can go to the account menu, which is the little user icon in the top right, to pull up your account um, menu and see your tasks, your ta calendar, you can get to the profile from here, and you can also switch from light to dark mode. Um, so this is what dark mode looks like if you're not already looking at it on your own screen. Um, and so you can switch back and forth really easily there. Um, Sakai 23 also features Sakai Plus. So if you've been to one of Dr. Chuck's sessions on this, you may know a little bit about it, but basically Sakai Plus is um, an LTI setup so that you can plug Sakai into any other LMS that uses LTI. And what it does is it'll spawn uh, you know, a Sakai site without having to integrate with your SIS and all the other campus systems. It gets all the user information from the enterprise LMS on campus, and then it will automatically send back any grades for things that are generated in Sakai will go back to the LMS of record. So this is a great option for people that want to kind of use some of the Sakai tools that maybe um, don't work quite the same way in their enterprise LMS, um, or maybe to satisfy some privacy concerns because Sakai does handle um, student information in a much more diligent fashion in terms of, of privacy. So, um, so this is a great option if you want to um, be able to kind of satisfy those niche um, requirements uh, without necessarily moving an entire campus to a system. So we're really excited about Sakai Plus and it is built into Sakai 23. There is some new accessibility um, information in uh, Sakai 23. And incidentally, there's a lot of accessibility improvements across the board. Um, unfortunately, many of these aren't visible because <laughs> they're in the code. It's sort of, you know, things like alt tags and labeling and you know, making it a, a bit, you know, 
and accessible for people with screen readers. Um, since I'm presenting slides, which are pictures, there wasn't a lot of pictures for me to show there. But just know that we did have a, a large number of accessibility improvements um, for the recent version and um, for 22 as well. Um, so we have a very dedicated accessibility team that has been helping us um, make sure that it's accessible to everyone. Um, but the, the new addition in 23 is this uh, special needs information that you can choose to include in the roster. So if you fill in this information, um, you can kind of keep tabs if students need accommodations of some sort. Um, the instructor can have that information available to them within the roster tool. And it's it's only it's not visible to everybody. It's just visible to the instructor. Um, our assignments tool has a new mobile friendly grader. So um, you may have seen the, the new Sakai grader in the last couple of versions. Well, we've um, switched it up slightly and now it's, um, it kind of floats. You see this grade submission, it sort of floats here because if you have a long submission and you wanna scroll down the page, um, you can still get to the grade controls. So at any point in the, um, the document or project, whatever it might be, you can click on this grade submission and you'll get this grade fly out here. And I'm showing you both the mobile view and the desktop view. Desktop view is on the left-hand side of the screen. Um, so this is what the grader looks like. You still have an ability to enter grades, feedback, all the things that you could do in the other um, version of grader in earlier versions. Um, it's just more um, set up for uh, mobile friendliness. And so this is what it looks like when you reduce down to mobile view. Um, if you click on the rubric, it expands out. Here's our rubric. And we can see um, that we've got the rubric. It's, it's presented more vertically opposed to kind of a horizontal grid, but that was done so that you could actually um, use it on a mobile device because it's really kind of unusable if you don't um, put it in that layout. So, um, so you'll see that in the, uh, in the new assignments uh, for this upcoming version. Our calendar also now um, incorporates conversations due dates. So conversations, um, if you've not used the conversations tool, it is live in this conference site. You can check it out there. Uh, if you set a due date on a particular topic, it will actually um, show up on the calendar now. So, uh, so that little piece of functionality is nice if you want to have um, conversations that are due on specific days. Uh, the dashboard tool, which was new a couple of versions ago, and it was sort of an experimental. Well, now it's visible by default. Um, and so if you choose to enable it, um, you can have it be the first tool that people encounter. That's what we have on TriSakai. Um, it's certainly something you can roll out at your institution whenever you feel ready, but because um, the overview is still available. Um, but uh, the dashboard contains widgets and we'll be adding to the collection of widgets over time. These are the current ones. Um, the task widget also appears in the user uh, menu you saw earlier in the new portal slides. Um, so this is uh, another way you can choose to have people um, kind of see what's going on, see what's up to date in their courses. There is another version of dashboard that will actually live within a course site. Looks slightly different because it's specific to a course. This one is specific to the user. Um, so, uh, so you can use dashboard in 23 if you like. The discussions tool has um, some new options as well. So you can um, download now the statistics as a CSV file if you want to download them for offline review. And um, the, the counts here for authored messages split out kind of the original post from the replies. So if you have an assignment where people have to post and then reply to two other students or something of that nature, you can check really quickly to see if they actually completed that. Messages um, now allows you to schedule a message. So if you want to send something, but you don't want to send it till tomorrow or next week, um, or even further out, maybe like midterm reminders. Um, so you can you can set up the message and then uh, pick your date when you want that to actually be sent to the recipients that you've chosen. The roster um, has a new uh, nickname 
uh, feature that it, the nickname is now visible. So you, you could put a nickname in to the profile tool previously, but it didn't really show up in a lot of places. So now it can actually be um, viewed within the roster. Uh, so if a student has a particular nickname that they prefer to use, um, that's now an option to view in the roster. The rubrics tool has a number of enhancements, um, but one that I know that a lot of folks will appreciate is the PDF export. So you can now export um, the rubric from the manage rubrics area. You'll see the PDF icon. You can also export a graded rubric if you're in the grader um, and you want to export a particular student's rubric, you can do that as well. So you can export it from either location um, to kind of have it in a nice print uh, ready format. There's a few other new things in rubrics. Um, so then you can, uh, when you when you create a rubric, you can assign points to it. Um, and so now there's a kind of a little pop up warning that will let you know if your assignment and rubric um, don't have the same number of points. So you get the opportunity to correct that before you save it. Um, you can also save rubrics as a draft. Now you don't have to necessarily publish them immediately. Um, you can change uh, criterion and rubric titles, even if the rubric is locked. So it's usually locked when it's associated with an item in the course. Um, this gives you a little bit more flexibility to at least change the naming on it. Um, there's a min and max score and criterion total weight warning. So you know if you've um, if you've got a weighted rubric that it adds up to 100%. Um, so you can double check that uh, before you uh, actually save the rubric. Um, and you can also create criterion groups for rubrics and a group as in group project, group assignment support has been added as well. Um, and you can also now use some basic formatting, things like bold and italics within the criterion description. So if you needed to format that text a little bit in those description boxes, you can do that now. Um, in site info, there's a couple of, of nice new features there. There's now a publish on date feature. So um, if you can schedule when your site will become available. Um, you can also have it be kind of handled automatically. Um, but uh, if you'd like, you can also schedule specific dates. So that's a new feature there. And then also um, in the import from site, merge first or import from site merge um, content, it's moved to the top. That's the one that people typically use the most. Um, in previous versions, it was in the second place there, um, but now it's moved to the top so that it will be a little more um, easier for people to, to find and, and select. In tests and quizzes, um, the user photos have been added. So you'll see in the, um, the list of, of submissions, you'll see the thumbnails of the users, or you'll see their initials if they don't have a photo. Um, and then also in the, um, the there's uh, notification options. You can choose uh, to notify users about uh, the tests and quizzes when the, the different things are available and, and uh, graded and such. Um, also in tests and quizzes, again, not uh, very uh, easy to capture in a slide, but there are a lot of uh, major improvements to performance that are um, incorporated into 23, a lot of improved handling around auto submit and dates. Um, you can print the calculated questions um, to display the variables now instead of kind of plugging in a value so you know where the variables are. And um, there's also a warning message for users about multiple tabs because that tends to catch people up a lot, a lot when they're testing if they have multiple tabs open. Um, so this warns a user before they begin an assessment. All right, so those are all of our um, new highlights for 23. Again, it's not completely comprehensive. You may find other stuff that's new that I didn't capture here, um, but I just wanted this to kind of cover the main items that, um, that you'll see and, and notice. Um, so I thank you for all at for attending. Um, hopefully you have a great couple days and enjoy the conference. Um, we're gonna have a short break and then we'll reconvene at 1030 for the um, unit digital plan session with EDF. So I'll see you in about 10 minutes. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.